Hi everybody, it's Amira. How are you? So I'm here today to run through a few lessons I learned playing with the specialty ranger paper um, plus the lawn fawn ink plus uh, this new stamp that was sent to me in the February kit. Now let me read to you what the back of this paper says it is good for because that's really important to know. So it says that this is a unique matte coated surface that accepts a variety of mediums for creative crafting. Uh, ideal for use with Ranger dye inks and pigments, Tim Holtz Distress inks, Distress markers, um, Distress stains, Adirondack, alcohol inks, paint dabbers, embossing powders, archival inks, watermark resist ink, perfect pearl powders, and mists, Ranger color wash, and other studio paints. So it looked to me like it was something that would take a lot of mediums. And just double checking with this lawn font, this is a dye ink um, for use with alcohol-based markers, acid-free, archival and fade resistant, waterproof, fast drying, and permanent. So the two seemed like a great combination to get stamping. So as you can see here, I've pulled out all my icons from the stamp set that I wanted to stamp out. I also um, found that the ink was totally juicy, so I got really dirty <laughs> very quickly. And as you can see there, I pulled um, I pulled just a, a cloth that I used for my watercolors, and um, I sprayed some water in there, and just every time I stamped and finished with that one stamp, I cleaned it off on that um, towel or that cloth on the side there just to keep things clean and so as you can see here for that one page I stamped everything out so that I could get all my stamping done as uh, all my stamping out of the way so that I could just get on to card making so um, what I also decided to do is I had some Nina solar white cardstock and I just wanted to see how that stamped, um, how the Lawn Fawn ink stamped onto a different type of paper. Now, the Ranger paper is very slick, so the Nina was nice and absorbent, so I found that that was a difference. Um, and then I just had these scraps just from cutting down um, some of the papers, so I used the scraps as well to, to stamp out the sentiment. So I'm very um, thrifty, thrifty. Um, so everything was stamped out in the very beginning of the project so I could just really enjoy my card making. So here we are now. I pulled out my chameleon alcohol markers to add some color. Um, and what I noticed that as soon as I started laying down that color, the ink from the lawn fawn started feathering and bleeding out. Um, and I found that really surprising because the actual um, stamp pad said that it was for use with alcohol-based markers. And the stamping paper says that it, it's okay to use um, alcohol inks. So I was so confused. The chicks that I was um, coloring in were looking really streaky, really gray. The black was transferring to the tip of my beautiful <laughs> uh, chameleon pens, and I was really unhappy with um, with with the turnout of my little chicks. So here I am on a piece of scratch paper, just pulling that um, the black color off the felt tip of that pen. So I moved over onto the other piece of paper, which was the Nina cardstock um, with the Lawn Fawn ink, and it was beautiful. It went on really nicely. It didn't bleed the Lawn Fawn ink, and it was absorbed straight away, and the color was like yellow and fresh, and uh, no streaking, no graying, no black coming off onto the felt tip of that alcohol marker. So I was really, really per perplexed. So I decided to just go through all these little chicks here, quickly coloring them in, no shading or anything. So I pulled out my Kaser alcohol marker, a uh, Kaser Fusion it's called. I tried to do the same thing. Um, tried it on the stamping paper from Ranger with the Lawn Fawn ink and no way that black came straight off. And the 
chicks were streaky and they were awful. So then what I decided to do is I thought, okay, maybe I need to use Ranger ink with Ranger stamping paper. So I did that. Here I am just stamping out the little chicks. And here we go again with the chameleons and no way, no way. The uh, black came off onto the tip of the chameleon. It came up onto the tip of the fusion marker. So I thought, my goodness, I've stamped all these things. So I pulled out my ink tens pencils and yeah, they worked okay. A uh, little bit of um, the crayons coming off. Um, so I, I just had a piece of tissue paper there just um, kind of rubbing away and nothing came off. The ink is dry. It's been dry for a long time. So um, I decided because I'd stamped <laughs> this whole page, I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ink tents to fill in all these chicks. So then I decided to check to see if the Ranger ink worked okay for Nina cardstock and just cleaning up my tip here and yeah it's beautiful um, it uh, colors in nicely no black comes off the edges with the ink and so the chameleons work the Kaser alcohol markers work so it just seems that that paper <laughs> is not meant for um, any kind of stamping. It's just so weird. I don't want to say it because I, I, I think maybe I made a mistake, but in my experience, I could not stamp and color in without um, the alcohol marker pulling off the ink. So um, I still use the ink tents here and just to color in all those um, chicks that I stamped out. I'm not going to waste them. I've already done that work, so I might as well use them. All right, so I thought, well, what can I do with this paper? So I pulled out some uh, watercolors, and it says here that it's um, for use with color wash and whatnot. So I thought, okay. So I pulled out my handy dandy mat here. Don't forget to use protection, you guys. <laughs> Um, it was all that messy splattering. Yeah, it goes everywhere. So have a craft mat underneath you. This one is a Ken Oliver uh, best mat ever. It's a great, it's really good. Um, so here I am just tapping and adding all kinds of color. And it's beautiful because this stamping paper is sleek. It really allows... Um, for the watercolors to travel and dribble and it just looks like whatever color you add on top sits on top of the paper and it doesn't soak in. So the actual um, dye ink when I stamped it, it looks like it sits on top. I mean it did dry on top but every time I touched it and even if it was dry it seemed to smudge just a little bit and then when you added whatever color you were putting on um, other than I guess the uh, the ink tents I kind of scraped it on because it's a crayon so it stayed there but it kind of made it made an indent into the paper which I didn't like so here I am just playing with color dribbling um, trying all the different palettes there you know you're not supposed to be mi uh, mixing complementary colors because it makes a mess and it looks like I'm making a mess but I'm actually playing and uh, I was quite relieved at this stage because um, I was happy. Then, this is the favorite part, I pulled out my alcohol markers and alcohol marker, um, alcohol inks, sorry, Adirondacks. Um, it says that this paper is for alcohol inks and just look at how fabulous this is. You add a drop of alcohol ink and it travels and boy does it, it's just so hypnotic adding drops and drops, different colors of drops, and watching them interact together and meld together and bleed and fuse. I have spent many, uh, um, uh, many a night <laughs> just dripping colors of alcohol ink on yuppo paper, and yuppo paper is quite hard to find. Um, but now I know that this specialty stamping paper does almost the same thing. It, it's beautiful. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Um, so hypnotic to do, to make and to watch. I'm watching it now thinking, wow, <laughs> I did that. 
So I'm trying, I really should leave some white space, Amir. I'll leave some white space, but that looks good. So, um, yeah, my little bottles. Okay, so this is just a, a for those of you who don't know about alcohol inks, um, they can come off because of the slick surface of the paper. You can remove alcohol ink. Gepo paper it comes straight off. That's why I'm using my hands to kind of flick and this is not as it doesn't come off as quickly as yuppo paper so um, I had to add some more but yeah you can see the ink dropping off there and it kind of takes the color back a little bit and blends them in a little bit which is nice so then this is a technique I've used before if you grab a stamp that is just a block out stamp like all black with no detail um, these work perfect here and these are some fairy stamps that I bought a while ago I love these fairy stamps and I only use them for alcohol um, play I guess this is called uh, I love these girls these girls are beautiful they're um, they just build the scene so nicely so I put a few up the top and at the bottom and then I decided to make it um, like an art not really a card like an art um, an art piece so I just grabbed my white gel a uh, mark uh, gel pen here and I just added a little bit of white so that my um, my card had a little bit of white in it but um, I'm really happy with how that turned out so I did put it on art on a card at the very end there so I will send that out as just like an art piece on a card to a friend um, and back to this little thing, which was, a uh, it looked like a mess at the beginning, but actually it's my abstract art, which I really love. I saw little creatures in there, and I put faces on them, and it's something that I used to do when I first started. Um, I didn't think I could draw creatures, but I could see them in my art, and uh, I'm so happy with this little piece. It's so cute. Whichever way you turn the card, you find a creature. Um, so... <laughs> It appeals to a childish part of me. Um, so, yeah, so cute. So I saw like a little kitty at the bottom there, and an echidna, and a crocodile. Very, very cute. So those are my two cards that I made here.